Well, it's my great pleasure today to be actually here in Los Angeles, and I'm going to be talking with one of the realest housewives of Melbourne, Susie McLean. Well, it's great catching up with Susie McLean in Los Angeles, of all places. I know, isn't it? It's <laughs> just glorious. Well, Susie, the first question of today is actually not from me. It's from Petty Fleur Berenger, whom I love, and she says, Susie, have you found a Jewish husband yet? Oh, <laughs> she's tricky. Oh, oh well, um, I've met uh, quite, I've met quite a few people. Uh, have I found specifically a Jewish uh, person? And uh, no, but um, I have. I'll just leave it that I have actually met uh, met um, a few fellows, and one in particular. So, Lovely. Uh, this is why you've been in, in LA? Or? Um, in LA, but yeah, uh, yeah so we we'll just have to, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it very sort of broad at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> Good for happens. you. <laughs> You're often billed as the country girl turned Turek housewife, so how does all this Real Housewives of Melbourne actually sit with you? It must feel quite unusual. I grew up in the country in the Western District when I was really little, up near um, the border near South Australia, Mount Gambia. Oh, okay. Yeah, halfway between Haywood and Mount Gambia, still mm. in Victoria. Mm. And then uh, we moved closer to Melbourne on a property called Carnival Station, which is just outside of Ballarat, probably about oh. 22 k's yeah. out of Ballarat. And uh, yeah, I had the most idyllic childhood with uh, horses, horse riding. We had, um, you know, a farm with cattle, sheep, and, and chickens, and, and animals, lots of animals. And uh, and I went to school in Ballarat, and um, yeah, it was very idyllic, and I and I loved to actually miss the country life. I'd like to. Uh -huh. uh, Go back one day. So from all of that would you say that you do have traditional values? Oh absolutely, absolutely. Yep. We're a very close family, we're a huge, you know, family. I've, I've got 28 cousins on one side yep. and um, you know, we all, we're all quite close and we, we do catch up um, very often and um, yeah, I'm enormously proud of my Italian heritage and family and um, yeah, I think it's probably one of the better parts of who I am. So. Now there are two men in your life that are very, very special to you, your sons Monty and Rupert. How close are you to them? Missing them at the moment, I haven't uh, seen them for three weeks, so uh, I'm uh, looking forward to uh, getting back and seeing them. And um, I just adore them, they're you know, my, my world and um, I think they're, uh, they're really you know, happy, well adjusted fine young men and I'm very very proud of them. You're a very active outdoors type of girl and I was quite surprised to read recently that you've gone back to classical ballet and even going on point. I have, yeah. I have. I, um, well it sort of started, I did ballet 30 years ago and when? I um, well, retired, I stopped doing it when I was 16, I obviously didn't have the body type and yeah I, out of the blue I started, uh, I joined a new gym and they were doing ballet bar classes and from there I Met um, a couple of the instructors who just retired from from some you know a ballet um, in I think one was a, from the uh, Bavarian ballet yeah. and then we were doing one on one classes and I said oh, look I'd love to sort of go back and do some classical ballet and possibly you know get back on point and and uh, it was a bit shaky to start with but uh, after a while I um, yeah it sort of sort of came back to me and uh, I enjoyed it and I think it's the best exercise for me I think. Um, yep. Fit so you weren't worried about getting back up on on your toes? Oh, it was quite painful, but things have changed now. They have gel pads that they put in the tip in the point. Yep. We, we didn't have those um, when I did ballet, and oh. we just used to go in raw and our feet would cut to ribbons, and um, so it was just fabulous. I thought, oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a newborn foal though to start. Yeah, off, sort of shaky, but uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be joining a. Uh, Ballet, ballet, ballet trip any, any day soon, but uh, or, or doing it for public consumption, but you know, I enjoy it. When I read about you and I'm actually talking with you, I'm a little bit puzzled. I'm thinking, how does this lady get onto the Real Housewives of Melbourne? So, can you talk us through the process of how you actually got onto the show? I think, um, having spoken to the casting director, um, she said that she sort of had me as a possible cast member from the first series, but it wasn't the right dynamic. I mean, they need sort of different people at different times. Yeah. And when I was approached, I didn't know that it was for the show. But I think that because I've known so many of the girls for such a long time, yeah. I think it was a natural fit for, you know, um, for me to sort of come on at this stage and uh, after they've sort of established, you know, 
for the characters, I think, yep. after a time. And, uh, yeah, it's created uh, a few dramas, I'd say that. But I think, uh, you know, I've, I've enjoyed it. I think, you know, I think you see a lot, there's a lot of drama and there's a lot of, you know, sort of angst and, and um, conflict. But I think the reality is there's also a lot of joy and there's a lot we do... In, you know, genuinely enjoy spending that much time together. I think if you get eight women and put them together in any dynamic, there's always going to be issues. There's always going to be things that need to, you know, you know, times when you need to confront someone about certain things. Uh, being in, you know, when it's filmed and in the public eye, it's probably, you know, escalated that a bit more. Of you know, course. sometimes we're yeah. filming, we're tired, we're, you know, titchy, we've had enough of each other sometimes, you know. Um, so it can be escalated quite a bit, but the, the issues that are there are quite genuine and uh, I think that would be the case in normal life and in that regard I would say it's very real. So in the show there's quite a bit of arguing and yelling and the dropping of the F-bomb. How does all of that sit with you? I don't, I don't like the swearing. I think that, you know, I've been raised in an environment with swearing and particularly, you know, women of a certain age I think it's just awful you know the swearing is just awful and when I hear it it just goes straight through me and it's not something that that I do or you know I still f f follow my boys around the house and if they drop you know like an, an F or a C or a T or whatever I you know um, I'm quite strict about it I say, wash your mouth out with soap <laughs> the squidgy one <laughs> and they're like, uh, so um, when I hear the other the other girls doing it I don't um, I feel really uncomfortable and I feel bad for them as well because it looks and sounds just awful yeah. and I think that they probably would cringe when they do see it on the air, you know, um, so yeah, that's my take on something. So are you famous yet? Has anybody stopped you in the street? Well, I think uh, because I've only been on for one season, I don't think it's quite intense, but people will come up and they're, they're just so lovely. They'll say, you know, I've seen you on the show and, and I, you know, I really appreciate this or I can identify with that or, you know, you made, you know, a pavlova and I'd love to have the recipe for that. Everyone is just really lovely. Wow. I have never had an experience um, where anyone has come up and said anything negative. The only thing people say is, oh, you know, it seemed like the type, why are you doing this particular show? Right. And, yeah. Um, that, that sort of I find difficult to answer sometimes, particularly to a perfect stranger in the middle of a supermarket. I, you know, I sort of want to go into the details in the, in the front of the baked beans. Sure. You know, it's sort of it's um, <laughs> it can it can be a bit much, but um, I certainly um, have found it. You know, people have been lovely. Occasionally, you know, on social media, you'll get the, the odd person that says something negative or derogatory, and, and people can be quite nasty. And, yep. Um, and you just got to take that in perspective. I just think, well, they've had their, their one minute of release and they've sat yep. back in their chair and thought, oh, I've got her there. And I think, <laughs> well, you know, for that moment of release, you've actually, you know, like, ruined my day. So, it's, uh, well, they do. They sort of cut, cut a little bit. They'll say something personal. And, yeah. and of course it hurts. You know, we're human well, beings. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I feel for some of the other girls, some of the things that they write about them, and I'm actually quite protective of them. Yeah. Each and every one. Yeah. And when I read things about them, I think, mean you don't understand you don't know the full story exactly and um you know so i think in that regard social media is a bit tricky but yeah. in public it's great i read that your favorite life motto is actually from shakespeare how far that little candle throws his beams so shines a good deed in a weary world it is a pretty weary world at the moment isn't it well that's the thing it's a weary world and it's i don't think uh you know, I, I think you can get overwhelmed with that yeah. because, I mean, how far do you take it? There's so much, you know, terrible things going on in the world, you know, like the Correct. Florida, you know, the yeah. shootings in Florida really upset me terribly. And and even within our own environment, within our, our home, you know, I've just, my son made me a sense that there was a carjacking in, in Lancel Road. That's mm. one street from where we live. And, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of terrible things going on and illnesses and things like that. But I think that as a person, I've sort of, that stayed with me from a very young age. It's actually a line that is used in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which yes. is my favourite movie that I saw when I was first when I was three. And, oh, okay. And that line has really resonated with me my whole life. My boys even said, when, when we bury, we're going to put it on your gravestone. Because <laughs> um, I say it to them all the time. And uh, I think that if you do something good, sometimes just, just be conscious of that. Just trying to sort of, just try and do something positive all the time. Yeah. I think that. 
and I think um, that served me well and I'll just keep you know no matter what darkness around just, just keep you know striving for something good. Now I have a Shakespearean quote from Henry the fourth to end our interview today it is thy friendship makes us fresh so Susie McLean thank you very much for your time today it's been great catching up especially here in Los Angeles and thank you for your time thank you thank you so much I've really enjoyed it thank, thank you, you.